starting quarterback of Gavilan Junior College, Jeff Garcia looked to raise his stock in the eyes of Division I scouts. Father and coach Bob Garcia made sure this would happen by centering his offense around Jeff. He ran for 700 yards. Jeff did. As a guy that out of high school, I was going, hey, he can't run. 700 yards, that's a number one runner. And then passed for almost 2,000 yards. In 1990, Jeff accepted a full scholarship to nearby San Jose State. That same year, Jeff's dad was entering his 20th season as head coach of Gavilan. The decades of stress would take a toll on Bob Garcia in the season opener. That night, he went down to his knees, and they figured he'd have a heart attack, and his blood pressure was sky high, but he wouldn't get off the field. The stubborn Garcia wouldn't acknowledge the heart attack. That Monday, his peers at Gavilan College confronted him. Finally, this one woman beat you. She said, Bobby, we love you. And you know what? It's sad that you're not going to see your son play, because you're going to die. So they sent him up to St. Mary's the next day, and he had a five-way bypass. Bob would retire from coaching and live to see Jeff play. I was given that opportunity to be on this earth for a few more years and be with him every day. And I went to all his games at San Jose State. In 1991, Jeff played sparingly as a backup until an injury to the first team quarterback gave him a shot as a starter. He never looked back. This is my opportunity to run with it. I'm going to run with it, and I'm going to make the most of it. In Jeff's junior year, the Stanford Cardinal were the biggest game on the schedule. I had always wanted to go to Stanford. I watched John Elway play at Stanford and watched him on TV. San Francisco 49er legend Bill Walsh had just accepted the job as head coach at Stanford. Although Stanford crushed San Jose State, Walsh came away with a lasting impression of Jeff. This one player could do things that uh, were really out of the ordinary. He could move, he could avoid, he could find receivers. He had great instincts. In Jeff's senior year, San Jose State was playing poorly as a team. Undaunted, Garcia set his sights on Stanford and led the Spartans to a near upset. He almost beat us by himself. This guy getting ready to break all of the San Jose State passing records. After having worked with Joe Montana and Steve Young, I could see those qualities in Jeff Garcia. That's pretty cool that Bill Walsh, who I watched coach the 49ers and watched coach Joe, Joe Montana, would say something like that. He's got to know what he's talking about, right? He's the guru. Although San Jose State finished 2-9 and nine that season, Jeff broke the school record for total yards and wound up 15th in the nation in total offense. More importantly, he made an ally in Bill Walsh. I earned the respect of Bill Walsh, and, and he had a lot of very positive things to say about me. Jeff was selected to play in the East-West Shrine All-Star game played that year at Stanford Stadium. Before the game, Jeff spoke to Coach Walsh. He said, well, Coach, I just want to thank you for some of the things that you said that day. And he goes, hey, you were deserving of it. And you know what? This Saturday, you're going to be the MVP of the game. And I kind of, like, shook my head. And I'm like, all right, well, thanks, Coach. 56 years earlier, Jeff's grandfather, Red Elder, had played in the game as an all-conference halfback from Kansas State. Jeff and Red were honored that day as the only grandfather and grandson to ever participate in the event. He was down there on the field for the coin toss. It was just awesome. And for him to go and play as he did, uh, you couldn't have written a better story. The West trailed the East late in the fourth quarter. With just over six minutes remaining in the game, Jeff engineered three scoring drives to put his team a point away from tying the game. They would go for the two-point conversion. Takes it through the end zone, all the way to the corner of the end zone where all the people were from Gilroy, jumps in the stands, everyone's going crazy, high five. It was just a special time in my life that was shared by many important people in my life. The guru had been prophetic. Jeff was the most valuable player in the East West game, came in and won the game in the fourth quarter. And so I'm assuming that Jeff will be one of the top draft choices. With many pro scouts at the game, Jeff thought for sure he would be selected in the upcoming NFL draft. He was wrong. I remember even my college coach at the time, John Ralston, was quoted in the paper as saying, 
Well, he's not a real big guy. He doesn't have a real strong arm, but, you know, he's tough as nails and he'll give his all for you type deal. And I'm like, here's my coach. You're already knocking me. Draft day came and went. Jeff's name was never called. I was kind of disappointed. We sat there for two days. We thought maybe we'd get a nibble. Shocked. Bill Walsh stepped in to offer some help by contacting 15 NFL teams on Jeff's behalf. He got only one response. It came from a guy by the name of Coach Mariucci, who was the quarterback coach at Green Bay at the time. And basically what he said is that, Jeff, I have a pretty good group of quarterbacks right now. I have Mark Brunel, Brett Favre, and Ty Detmer probably going to bring a quarterback in who's just going to be a camp guy, doesn't really have a chance of making the team. We decided on a guy, I don't know if you've ever heard of him or not, his name is Kurt Warner from Northern Iowa. <laughs> that spring, the Calgary Stampeders of the Canadian Football League offered Jeff a tryout. Disappointed, but not disheartened. Jeff would give Calgary a go, but his real ambition still lay with the NFL. He pretty much said, you still have to make this team play in this league. You're not an NFL player. You're, you're not going to be able to play in the NFL. 